You can pick up your movie Monster Series figures at Amazon Japan. Check them out at links in the description. Kaiju, Turtles, Dragon Ball, and more. It's Steven Story Reviews. Hello, collectors. It is Steven here, and today we're going to be taking a look at some figures from the latest Godzilla anime. We're going to be taking a look at the movie monster series Godzilla Ultima and Jet to Jaguar. Yep. Godzilla and Jet Jaguar. Now, uh, we're going to hold off a little bit on spoilers right now for future movie monster series releases because uh, if you know, you know that maybe we'll be seeing some more figures coming up that aren't exactly Anguirus and Manda. That's all that I'm going to say. Anyway, continuing on here, we do have our first two releases from the new anime series Singular Point, and quite frankly, these designs are a little bit different, and they do have some folks wondering if these are going to be worth putting up on the shelf. Well, there's our feelings about the designs, and then there's our feelings about the figures, and the latter is what we're going to be taking a look at here today. So let's take a look to see whether or not these two new and quote-unquote improved designs are worth adding into your collection. We'll go ahead and start with Godzilla, and quite frankly, I do think that Godzilla is a little bit disappointing. No, I'm not talking about the design, which quite frankly, I do share that same sentiment. But I'll have to see Singular Point in order to see whether or not my idea or my thoughts entirely will change. But when it comes to the actual figure, there are a couple of things that I think Ben and I did really well with, and a few where they just simply dropped the ball. What am I talking about here? Because it sounds like I'm being harsh, and well, I don't know if I am. Maybe you disagree, maybe you will agree. But what I am going to say the figure does well is the sculpted details. This figure does really carry on the tradition that Bandai has been able to really nail from the beginning all the way up until now when it comes to the sculpt. Realistically speaking, when it comes to accuracy, they really don't miss the mark. Compared to everything that we've seen so far, Godzilla Ultima does look just like what we've seen on the posters and the still images, so on and so forth. And actually, I think this may be the best representation of what we may be seeing in Singular Point compared to all the other promotional materials that we have been seeing. And for some of you who have been saying, well, what about some of the smaller details like the quote unquote triple throat that is uh, going to be seen in the mouth? Congratulations. Bandai actually did that. It's just almost impossible to see because his mouth is closed and it's difficult to open. Now, where did Bandai really drop the ball here? Now, if you know about some of the recent vinyl releases, not just in the movie Monster series lineup, but also with all of the various Ultraman releases, Bandai has been stepping it back when it comes to paint applications. Put a pin in that when we talk about Jet Jaguar. Now, when it comes to the paint applications, Godzilla here is <laughs> missing some and also has a little bit too much paint apps. What do I mean? Well, simply put, he should have some red on his dorsal place, which simply is not there. And the red wouldn't really be all that difficult. If you take a look at the tag, which we'll be taking a look at in a second, on the dorsal plates, it kind of sort of has a little bit of a maple leaf effect where we can actually see, I guess you might call them veins, and those should be red. Those are going to be some of the interior parts of the dorsal plates, and the rest of them should be silver. And then when we take a look at the rest of the tail, which does have the dorsal plates, uh, part of the tail, the whole section is just cut off. Now, when we take a look at the toes and just below the dorsal plates on his back, we are going to see some overspray of the paint that they used here. So that may not bug everyone, but it's very unfortunate that we do have some hiccups when it comes to paint on what is arguably going to be one of the more popular movie monster series releases that we're going to have this year with a slew of movie monster series releases that we do have planned. But generally speaking, what we do have here is not bad. It, I would say, is good for the price point when it comes to looks. And then for about five bucks cheaper, we have the significantly better Jet Jaguar. Now, I say significantly better when it comes to looks, because there's a lot going on here. Jet Jaguar is cast in essentially a cream colored vinyl and then the paint comes in to do the heavy lifting. So make sure you're not scratching this guy up, okay? Okay. When it comes to the very, very finer details, like making sure the paint applications are always in the correct spots, like the little slots in the mouth, unfortunately, when you get up close and personal to this guy, you're going to notice that, well, they're not always going to be that way. Maybe a little bit underneath, maybe not enough up top. Maybe they're going to be off a little bit to the left or to the right, but still, the actual paint application intent is very good here. And even the smaller details in the sculpt, like we do have the little swirly bits in the eyes, and then we'll see the metal grating on the... I'm going to assume anyway the cage on his chest that all looks 
fantastic. Mine had a couple of minor paint scuffs when I got it out of the box, but that's okay considering the price point and the fact that, well, this went through international travel without a dedicated box or a clamshell of any kind to make sure that it wouldn't have that sort of protection. And, uh, you know, there was, there was no way to really prevent that from happening, unfortunately. That's just the name of the game. And what's really cool here is that when we take a look at the more specific paint application, they went even so far as to paint the wires on his back. So when we go from one figure, which it's Godzilla, and then we go to the next one, Jet Jaguar, I know there are a lot of fans of Jet, but realistically speaking, not really all that significant when it comes to Godzilla's history versus Godzilla, we have the lesser figure with better paint and a more interesting colored vinyl compared to Fart with Reverb. One thing that I will give Godzilla over Jet Jaguar is the quality of the vinyl. What do I mean by that? Jet Jaguar, mine already is developing a lean. <sighs> Disappointing. But everything else is very good with this figure. Articulation is not name of the game when it comes to movie monster series, but we do have a few points. Godzilla is only going to be able to swivel at his shoulders where the arms plug in and at the hips. Nowhere else. No neck swivels and no tail swivels. So if you want an action figure, wait for the SH Monster Arts if we do get one. Now, when we go on over to his buddy, Jet Jaguar, we do have quite a few points of articulation, surprisingly. We do have swivels at the shoulders and then right at the elbows, just enough to constitute a bicep swivel, we do have, well, swivels, which is cool. At the waist, we are going to have a swivel as well, so this way we can spin Jet Jaguar around, and then we are going to have hip swivels as well, so that's pretty cool. Now, taking a look at the hip design, it's no wonder that this guy is already developing a bit of a lean, because if you look at that, huh, that's a pretty different. Good different, I'm glad they're trying something different, but it's a little bit different, so the lean is not surprising. I'm very surprised, though, they didn't put in a neck swivel. Makes a whole lot of sense, don't know why they didn't do it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the tags where they're going to be pretty much the same except for obviously the character designations. And like I mentioned earlier, we can see that Godzilla is missing some details when it comes to the paint. Jet Jaguar, yeah, he is missing some details as well, but realistically speaking with what we get here for the price point, <laughs> that's just fine. Now let's go ahead and move on over to a size comparison with King Kong, ooh, Kong 2021, because hey, I'm sure if you're going to get these two, you're probably interested in him as well. So why not have a party and make the Kong review easier? As you can see, these figures should blend in just fine enough with your already established kaiju display. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Godzilla is going to be closer to the $25 range and Jet Jaguar closer to the $20 range. And of course, I'm talking about that when converting from yen to USD. Generally speaking, for the price, I think they're both good. Godzilla's going to be bigger, so that's probably why they cut back on the paint apps, but I feel like they're going to be able to sell a lot more of him, so they could have definitely done more with the paint. However, Jet Jaguar, for being so affordable, is very good, with the only real issue is that he's going to develop a little bit of a lean. <laughs> I don't know. At the end of the day, though, these are both really nice to have, and I have a feeling that, based on the quality, Jet Jaguar is going to sell a whole lot. So if you are looking to get these... These really are the talk of the town amongst collectors right now, so get them sooner rather than later. They're very available. If you know where to look, Amazon Japan has them. Not difficult to add them to your cart, make an account, and just pay for them and get them in like three days. So uh, you have the chance. If you want them, get them. If not, well, you're going to pay more. Ding! Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me, I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand-selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand-selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.